HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus, a virus which, if left untreated, leads to the development of acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, more commonly known as AIDS. Overall, the virus is estimated to have led to over 40 million deaths worldwide. HIV features two copies of positive sense single strand RNA, and importantly, is a retrovirus, meaning it produces reverse transcriptase that reverse transcribes its RNA into DNA, which is then inserted into the host genome, leading to production of more viral proteins. The reverse transcriptase the virus uses is inherently error prone, resulting in many different subtypes and variations, which contributes to viral resistance. HIV-1 is the most common subtype, but HIV-2 is another form that is more indolent and is mainly in West Africa. The main target is white blood cells, particularly CD4 T lymphocytes and macrophages, that the virus enters by targeting the CD4 markers in the cell surfaces and fusing using a chemokine co-receptor, such as CCR5 or CXCR4. The host cell becomes a factory for producing HIV proteins, as well as ultimately being destroyed by the virus, leading to a gradual decline in the number of these cells in the body. Over time, as more cells are affected, the immune system is slowly eroded, eventually culminating in the inability to fight off opportunistic infections and increases susceptibility to cancer. This constellation of signs and symptoms is called AIDS, which takes roughly 10 to 15 years to develop from initial infection on average. HIV can be transmitted through blood or blood products, fluids containing blood, sexual fluids or breast milk, with most adults being infected by sexual exposure or through injection drug use. Approximately 40 million people were affected worldwide in 2023, with 97% of them being adults. The prevalence is roughly equal between males and females, but 80% of new cases in the United States are male. Overall, the prevalence for adults between 15 and 49 years of age is 0.8% but is higher in some populations, including transgender people at 9.2%, men who have sex with men at 7.7%, injectable drug users 5%, and commercial sex workers at 3%. The signs and symptoms vary based on the stage of disease, with HIV classically being described in phases, based on CD4 count or clinical features. For the purpose of highlighting the clinical features, I've included the World Health Organization classification, though now due to available treatment, CD4 counts are more commonly used and we'll look at those as well. Stage 1 of the World Health Organization stages includes the acute viral illness that typically occurs within the first month and often features fever and lymphadenopathy. There can be features like pharyngitis or orogenital ulcers. Persistent lymphadenopathy beyond 3 months is also included in stage 1. Stage 2 features can include unexplained weight loss of less than 10%, recurrent upper respiratory tract infections, minor skin changes like pruritic eruption or seborrheic dermatitis, and herpes zoster infections like shingles. Stage 3 features include unexplained weight loss beyond 10% of body weight, unexplained fever or diarrhea beyond 1 month, oral candida and pulmonary tuberculosis or severe bacterial infections like meningitis. Stage 4 includes a wide range of more advanced disease such as extra pulmonary tuberculosis, pneumocystis pneumonia, toxoplasmosis, lymphoma, or Kaposi sarcoma. The United States Center for Disease Control 
uses slightly different staging based more on the CD4 count. Counts above 500 cells per microliter or making up more than 26% of lymphocytes are considered stage 1. Stage 2 features cell counts of 200 cells per microliter to 499 cells per microliter or between 14 and 25% of lymphocytes, while stage 3 or AIDS features counts below 200 cells per microliter or below 14% of lymphocytes. Presence of an AIDS defining illness automatically means a stage 3 or AIDS diagnosis. These include any of the World Health Organization stage 4 conditions, as well as any tuberculosis infection, amongst others. I'll leave a link to the full lists in the description. Despite these, the largest contributor to morbidity and mortality in HIV and AIDS patients is cardiovascular disease, particularly from atherosclerotic coronary artery disease, but also other conditions such as heart failure and cerebrovascular disease, though the underlying mechanisms are still not fully understood. If suspected, initial testing includes blood tests using HIV combined antibody and antigen testing done via ELISA, specifically HIV-1 and 2 antibodies as well as the HIV-1 P24 antigen. This is important as there is a window period in which IgG antibodies are formed, with most people taking around 4 weeks but some taking as long as 3 months to develop them. The risk of testing antibodies alone in this period is getting a negative result while antibodies are still forming, which would be a false negative result. Using the P24 antigen test as well has reduced this window period to around 10 days, but generally it is advised to have this repeated at least 4 weeks post exposure as well. The Western blot test was previously used to confirm a positive ELISA. But more recently, the HIV-1 and 2 antibody multi-spot test has largely replaced this to differentiate the subtype. Other tests include HIV viral load, detecting levels of HIV RNA, CD4 counts, full blood count, urea and electrolytes, liver function tests, as well as hepatitis A, B and C. Pregnancy testing sexually transmitted infection screening and urinalysis are also recommended. Treatment involves a multitude of professionals addressing not only the antiretroviral therapy and complications, but also the psychological impact a HIV diagnosis can have. Antiretroviral therapies are indicated in all adults with detectable viral load, regardless of CD4 count. It has been shown to reduce the risk of transmission, disease progression, as well as reducing comorbid disease. This is ideally started on the same day as diagnosis, but typically within 7 days. Caution however is needed in those with opportunistic infections as there can be a risk of immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome. Art medications are broken down into 5 main types. Integrase strand transfer inhibitors, INSTEs, like dolutegravir, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, NRTIs, like tenofovir, and non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, NNRTIs, like dorovirine. Fourth is protease inhibitors, and fifth are pharmacokinetic enhancers, which increase the effectiveness of the other types. A typical first-line regimen will include two NRTIs and either an INSTI or an NNRTI. Once viral suppression has been achieved, statin therapy may be initiated to help reduce the associated cardiovascular risks. Specific treatment is indicated depending on the opportunistic disease developed. Some examples include pneumocystis pneumonia, in which antibiotics like cotrimoxazole also known as septrin, are used, thrush, where if oral, nystatin can be used, though if there is a risk of esophageal involvement, systemic antifungals like azoles are used, and in the case of toxoplasmosis, 
perimethamine and sulfadiazine are options. Kaposi sarcoma may be treated with cryotherapy or radiotherapy, though systemic chemotherapy may be needed depending on the individual case.